It's actually brutal in this room right now. Like, it's so fucking hot in here. So, it's because this house doesn't have central air, but we'll get through it. So today we're gonna talk about tools. I got my, my new tool bag up here. This is for my new job that I have. And I have toolboxes all over the plant. I got a bigger toolbox, another bigger toolbox. I have a big tool bag that's on the back of a walkie rider. Uh, basically the new machine that, I'm, that I work on is a Verticue. It's very big, it's huge. So, I mean, it's like literally probably the size of two city blocks. It's, it's maybe even three, it's very big. So it's, an, it's just impossible to walk around with a tool cart just pushing it around. So I have a walkie. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a, a forklift that you stand on, but the, the lifts are behind you and you go you drive it forward and the uh, forks are behind you. So I use that, but this is my new main bag and this is specifically just for that machine. Like everything on here will do what I have to do for that machine. Across the street where like the fillers are and the labelers and the packers and all these different things that have been around the plant for quite some time that are going to have a lot of odds and ends because of repairs from other guys and people just being on the machine and working on it. You know, you, you put stuff that may be different than it actually should get. So I'm lucky enough to be able to work on the machine that's brand new that doesn't have like all these different bolts and nuts and different conveyor belts that whatever works try to kind of deal uh, so anyway I got a lot of people asking me like where to start to be a an engineer or a journeyman or, or whatever uh, maintenance mechanic whatever you want to call it it's basically a journeyman you got to be able to do everything you got to be able to do welding plumbing uh, electrical you got to be able to work on PLC cabinets um, so you know it's a lot if you're you're gonna get started and you're looking at this like holy shit I really need all that there's there's you know there's just basic things you're gonna start at, but uh, this, I've been a mechanic for a very long time. Um, so, Storm, what do you got? Really, dude? I don't even wanna know where you got that, but okay. I've been a mechanic for a pretty long time. These freaking beads are keep hitting the table. <laughs> I've been a mechanic for a long time, so I have a lot of tools, I have a lot of different stuff, but sometimes things work better than others. With this machine, I don't wanna be you know, you got to climb up on top where the robot is and all these other areas. You know, you, you just can't bring your tool cart up there. I can't bring my walkie up there. There, You know, so I got this bag to where I just sling it on my shoulder. It didn't come with a shoulder sling, but I put one from another tool bag on there. Uh, but it's really, it's not heavy at all. Um, the thing about this bag, though, is like you're, you're going to want to pack it out with all this different stuff. But you, you're going to notice that I have things that are a lot of multi-use kind of deals. And we're going to go through this, but... And then I have some other things that are like honorable mentions that you definitely should have. So we'll get into those things in a minute. But first I want to talk about what I carry on my body. And uh, for my for my belt, I'm always going to use the Trayvac Cinch. All right, it's got the flat top. It's uh, aircraft aluminum. It's a really nice belt. And then I always keep my the leather tail of knives sheath that been, has been custom made for me. I've had this for a while. Got my titanium big idea design pen on there. I have a Leatherman Free P4 on there, which is the best Leatherman in my eyes. And then my newest deal, which is the Phoenix E18R. And I'm gonna be using this light now to replace my O lights instead of O light. I just I just O lights have been dying on me really quickly. The batteries have been just going to shit. I've been carrying this light for quite some time now. This is my go-to. I carry two flashlights on me at work. One, this is my go-to light that's always going to be like right here. So I'll just pull this out and this will be my troubleshooting light. This light, the reason why I always have two lights is because I always need one for my hat. Alright, for a hands-free kind of deal. Did I just turn it on? I'm not sure how this light works yet, so it should be on now. But you always need a hands-free deal. You don't want to be putting this thing on your hat, although you can. It's just a little bit too big for that. So I like this one though. It's still magnetic. Still has the magnetic thing, just like O lights. I just think it's a better design. Um, and it has the magnetic charger, which is in a different location on this light. So it's right down here. Uh, it's not as bright as, say, your SR Baton 2. 
but the battery it just dies it, it goes out on me in the middle of a job it constantly does it all the time this is the second time I switched the battery in this in one year it's supposed to be rechargeable I know they're under warranty they'll send you a new one all this blah 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 but I shouldn't have to do that so I've been looking for a new light I, I really like the Phoenix LD30 this is been way better than any O light that I've ever had. I mean, this thing takes a whooping. If you look at it, like it's already all jacked up on the edges and scraped up and marked up. And you know, I use this light probably a thousand times a day, and that's an understatement. So, new EDC light for work, and uh, it's light. It's it's just a nice little light. Oh, and there it goes. And not for nothing, guys, but like, look at this light. This thing is really nice looking I like the darling on it we got to do a review on this so we'll get to that so that's my my on body stuff that I got going on other than that I keep I usually just wear this calculator watch Casio cheapy don't really care if it breaks or falls off at work you know they're like 20 bucks or something uh, sometimes I'll even wear my G-Shock once in a while I'll wear my Seiko SK808 but not a whole lot knife for the knife I've been using the steel wheel cut jack at work um, the Vertiq system has these pallet boards that basic, basically recycle when they come through the palletizer, the RD pallets or regular pallets go on top of these pallet boards and then the product gets packed from the robots on these pallet boards that go through the palletizer and then drop from an elevator and all this, all this stuff. Hard to explain, but they go on these rotating pallet boards that just rotate through the system and they get these, they have this like grip tape top on them. And the, the forklift drivers, when they take the product off, some of them come in a little too low and they scrape. Or sometimes these pallets go into the doghouse, which is where they collect up. So they get to a certain point and they recycle back through the system. What happens is these doghouse forks, they come in. They're called dogs. They come in and they scrape the top and they rip that duct tape up. And, or not duct tape, whatever that stuff top part of it is. It's like a plastic material. It's really sticky. It has grip tape on it. And I've just been slicing that stuff off, and this knife has been doing awesome with that. I mean, I must have did a hundred of them already. Uh, the machine isn't that old, but those, those pallets are getting whooped. So anyway, <clears throat> if you don't scrape that peeling part up, what happens is some of the next pallets that come on there will get jammed, and they'll twist and turn, and they just won't go through the machine right. That's where spills happen, and just creates problems. So I just whoosh, slice it off. Steel wheel cut jack been a great knife for that I don't like having giant knives on me at work but this thing for that I mean a small one just wouldn't cut it so get it all right so let's move into the bag I think we're gonna have to do a close-up thing on this and get me out of the camera this bag is the Vito Pro Pack and this has been you know I've had this thing for about a week now and it's awesome um, these tools I've had for a while but just the way it works to bring it to place to place is just a lot better. So let's start with the tape measure up front. This is your Stanley Fat Max. Guys, if you're going to get a tape measure, just you know that this is the best one you're going to get. A Stanley Fat Max, there is no better. Now, I'm a big fan of the Stanley Fat Max Fractional, which I have. I didn't bring it, but this is the one that I always keep here. The, uh, the Fractional one is on my bag. And basically what that does, it's a, it's a tape measure for dummies. It helps you learn tape measuring. It's, I've had it for years. I really like it because it tells you one eighth, three quarters, blah, 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 seven eighths. It tells you what the little lines mean. So, you know, if you're new to tape measuring and, and you don't know how to read a tape measure, I suggest you get the fractional Stanley and it will help you immensely and uh, you'll learn it in, in an hour of using it and it's really not that hard so um, you know but this is my go-to uh, that's always here I do have another one right here and this one is going to be in metric so it's in meters all right and this one's going to be measuring in meters and in inches sometimes for these machines you need them you need meters all right so this is the little Milwaukee uh, I like this one it locks it does you know does what it needs to do it's little I just hang it on the side here. Uh, sometimes I won't have this on here, so I'll always have a tape measure on me at all times. It's just when the bosses are around and you know something needs to be measured and you don't have a tape measure, you're gonna look like an asshole. So keep a tape measure on you at all times. 
And uh, there's that. So we'll get rid of this off here. Let's just dig into this front pouch part. So in here I keep like just the weirdest shit I'm going to keep in here. I believe this is a 530 seconds. Let me see. Yes, 530 seconds. And this is a specific Allen key. I know for one thing on like uh, it's going to be on for the wrappers. And we use, I have the book right here actually. Uh, here's a WorkTech wrapper book. And if you don't know what a wrapper is, that's a wrapper. All right. So what, the, what happens is the product on a pallet will go through the wrapper and a wrapper will wrap a wrap around it tight so it can get packed into the truck. So this is a specific tool just for the little uh, locks on the top of the rollers. So hard to explain, but I know what I need this for, so it's in the bag. Uh, other than that, I have these um, Nun hydration tablets. I'll You stick these in water. Being hydrated during work is so important. I also do the liquid IV thing. So um, if I'm working a lot of hours, which I've been lately, I'll do liquid IV and I'll even go to the doctor and get vitamins pumped into me. So, but these I always keep on me just in case I'm really dehydrated. Water's not doing a trick. These are awesome. All right. Uh, other than that, this is a cheat sheet for the Verticue system. I just keep this in here. Uh, just a cheat sheet tells you, you know, what it is. This is actually like a whole palletizer line. I know it's really confusing to look at, but I know what it is. Um, Basically, these are your three palletizers right here. That's where the robots are. These are where your wrappers are. All right, this is where the bulk loads come through. This is where the RD pallet. It's it's very confusing, but this is a little cheat sheet. Tells you like what the photo eyes do, how to reset the system, how to just do all that stuff. So, this has been really handy for me. And then this is something I keep. This is my identification. Not gonna flip it on there, but there's may have had this for years. On this side, I keep. Uh, this is a little reflector for the photo eyes just to flag them to make sure they're aiming at the reflector properly because you'll be you'll be you know the this system relies on photo eyes and where to go and whatever and what to start with what so you got to be able to make sure you can aim them eyes properly at the reflector so there's that uh, other than that I keep Loctite in here this is the low strength and high strength all right red and like the purpley color um, then we have a 11 mil. Now, understand everything on your machine. Is it metric or is it standard? All right, so everything on this machine is a standard. This is an American made machine. All right, this is an 11 mil. That's a standard socket. All right, then we got ourselves some zip ties because, you know, zip ties. I mean, what, right? Zip ties are, the, are life saving devices. I have a really sharp. This is a brand new blade on the end of that. This is the Sheffield razor knife. Best razor knife. I don't care what anyone says. This is the best razor knife you'll get. And it's really light. It's plastic. It's awesome. And I really like this one a lot. So I keep that in there because it's small and it's a folder. Right? It's not the, one of them big, goofy deals. Uh, right here we have, this is a 5 16ths. This, a lot of the nuts and bolts. And like I said, this is a, a lot of the bolts are standard, all right, but you know, metric, if you know the bolt size, metric compared to standard, you'll be okay. I know that uh, some of the nuts, 5 16 just work better than the, I guess it would be a 9 mil. I'm not really sure. It could be, yeah, it looks like a 9 mil would be the closest to the, somebody's going to correct me, but anyway, I know what this, what works for this. There's a specific bolt on the machine that I need for this right here, so that stays right there in there. And that's it for that front pouch. That's all I keep in there. This, these are the keys I keep on me at all times. These ones here are going to be for the cabinets that I need for some tools. Bigger tools, the drills, the cutters, all that stuff I have. Uh, my toolboxes, different toolboxes I lock up, different cabinets, different stuff like that. My locker key, all that stuff. And this is on a key bar. And it's got a deep carry clip, which I always keep in this pocket right here. All right, it's, I don't keep it on the mag nut on this because it's too much now these keys over here stay up here on this side of my belt loop at all times these keys are a little bit more uh, different so this is going to be for the plc cabinets it's a big cabinet full of a bunch of freak drives and electrical drives and wires and uh fun stuff right so this is the key to get into those Dude. Dude. special key only some people have this I'm one of them. 
this little guy here on some of the computer systems on the other side where not on this machine I'm working on but on the labelers on some of the other machines to access certain screens you need this right here to swipe and that'll get you into the engineers page where you can change uh, parameters and different stuff like that uh, I have toolbox keys for other other toolboxes I have and then these are these are lockout keys that basically I need when for the safety doors so I can override the safety doors with these sometimes I need to override the safety doors to be able to have the machine run with the door open so I can be inside the machine while it's running it's very extremely dangerous to do that so you have to be very careful and be on point because these machines will well they'll kill you they'll kill you so um, you know not all the time do I use these but uh, sometimes it's hundred percent necessary that I need to override that safety door and the machine needs to be running so I can problem solve and troubleshoot and do my job. This key is for parts room and we have some other safety override door keys. I, I pretty much have two of each because sometimes there's a back and a front door. Sometimes I need to get in uh, like some of the doors have different safety doors on either end so I need them all open. Uh, and then other than that, this is a flash drive unit here. This is a new addition to my keys. This flash drive here, uh, it's 128 gigs. This has all the maintenance specs and all the different uh, specs that I'll need for the Fanuc robot and the other machines, how to maintenance them properly. All the information that they didn't give to us that I found from a programmer who gave me and I got a flash drive. He gave me all this information, so I have it all right here. So that's that. Uh, that's my keys. So well organized, uh, chaos here going on, but you know, I know what it all is. So let's get into the fun stuff. We talked about the tape measure, we talked about that. Let's talk about this. This is the little night packs kit. Every guy needs this, every mechanic needs this right here. This is this is gonna save your life. Alright, this thing here has everything you need in it. There's three tools in here, I add it one which is these cutters. These are all Nipex, okay? Swedish made, or they say made in Germany, but some say they're made in Sweden. I don't really know. But anyway, these are Nipex uh, cutters, wire cutters. They're the best of the best. They, they're always really sharp. These are the mini Nipex uh, channel locks. Uh, you could call them channel locks. They're just, it, it's just a, a damn bolt, right? It adjusts, adjustable uh, wrench. That's what it is. But it locks, you know, everybody calls these channel locks, you know, get me a pair of channel locks, these are what I'm going to hand you, you know, I understand that a channel lock is a specific name of a tool, okay, I get that, that's a company, right, channel lock is a company, these are not channel locks, like I said, these are not channel locks, but usually when somebody said, do you have a pair of channel locks, this is what I'm going to hand them, I said, no, but I got something better. And that's what I'm going to hand you. These are the mini Cobra pliers from uh, Nipex. These are awesome. These, this little kit right here, it's just this is this is all I grab a lot of times, guys. I grab this and like a you know if I have to do something where I don't need a socket, this is just perfect. I don't you don't need anything else right here. Sometimes I'll just I'll just unstrap this and just take this to where I'm going. So it's always on the side. But that was before I had this, so now I just carry this thing around. But anyway, right here I have a little uh, push push screwdriver. Um, this the only thing I use this for really is to push the air valves. So the conveyor lines have these little air valves everywhere. The only thing I do is I just push. You know, sometimes you need positive air, negative air. Uh, so that's what I do with that. This is just a cheapy flathead, uh, just to get into small flathead stuff. Um, over here. These are new, so I'm not keeping both of these on here. I'm just going to keep the standard one, but, you know, uh, these are just a real good. Instead of having a hundred different Allen key sets, you're going to see a couple up here, T-handles. I'll explain that in a minute. Instead of having a bunch of Allen keys all over the place, I'm just going to have one of these, all right? Like I said, if I need specific stuff for a specific job, I'm going to bring my tool bag and then, and then tools up to that job. But as far as, like, you never know when you're on the go and you need something, this is going to have it, or this. So, I've been keeping them both in there because I'm not really sure which one I like more yet, the metric or the standard. Uh, we'll see. Both work for most of the stuff. Uh, I'm still getting used to the machine. Some of the stuff I've been finding is metric. Some of it's not. Some some of the metric uh, bolts fit better than standard. Some of the standard fits better for, for the metric. So, uh, you know, I just keep them both. 
Uh, and you're going to find that. You're going to find that sometimes, guys, and there's nothing wrong with that. I know that people are going to say, people are going to sit there and say, oh, how do you not know metric and standard? you got to know these things. Well, when you're on the job and you're on the fly, it's, yeah, you know the difference, right? But you have to understand that sometimes shit works better than others, and that's more important, right? What's, what's working to work better? Okay, hi, puppy. All right, so we got the Allen key stuff out of the way, and there's those. Um, so let's move on to, all right, let's talk about these though. So these two specific T handles, these are a 3 16 and a 5 30 seconds. There, there's, there's a very specific reason why I have these two only. And that's for the floor of the Vertiqu machine. The, the floor of the Vertiqu machine uses two different kinds of uh, Allen bolt. One's a 5 30 second and one is a 3 16 Allen, okay? And that just makes it easier. I don't want to use these. I know the size. I know these work best. And these just bang. Real simple, real easy. And that's why I have those. So understand the machines you're going to be working on and make sure you start to develop and write down. Like if you work on something and you know you're, you're probably going to have a likelihood of doing that again, write that down. Write that down in your little notepad or whatever. And you know, put a note of it to, hey, I'm gonna start carrying them tools more than, you know, why would I have seven different sets? Because you don't wanna be, you have to be efficient. To be a good mechanic, you have to be efficient. You have to be fast, you have to be on the fly. These machines move fast and the, the, the plant relies on the mechanics to keep the machine running. So if you're searching around for tools and something breaks and you don't have the right tool for the job, you're, you're not gonna be there long. So to be efficient, be a good mechanic, have the tools that you need. And, uh, you know, I always make sure, because they're like, oh, do you have uh, Allen? I'm like, not only do I have the Allen, I have the right Allen. Okay, so there you go. Um, more specific stuff uh, we have here. So everything, like I said, is, uh, is metric or standard. These, some of the nut drivers, I've been uh, finding for the standard size. It, it's just not working. So I used metric for these, and this is eight tools right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're all different. These are by channel lock. I haven't used these much yet, but I've already ran into instances where I can see that these would help. All right, so uh, you got a three quarter, you have a five eighths, you have a nine sixteenths, eleven sixteenths, you have your half inch, three eighths, uh, five sixteenths, and a seven sixteenths. The main two tools that I've already know that I need to use on this machine are a seven sixteenths and a three quarter. Okay. Oh, and a nine sixteenths as well. So um, those are the three that I've already identified just in two weeks of working on this machine that I need a hundred percent all the time. So instead of having four different, three different wrenches, I'm gonna have these two right here that'll do everything. Or worst case, you know, I have this which basically adjust to anything you want. I mean, look at that thing. That's way over a three quarter. So awesome, right? Gotta have the right tools, guys. It's so important to be an efficient mechanic. So uh, these are by Channel Lock, and uh, so far I really like these. I haven't used them a lot, but like I said, I know I will be. All right, so for a ratchet, we're just keeping up here. A, this is from just a cheapy ratchet, a Duralast. Um, and you know, I have for it, a specific thing. It has a three-quarter socket on it and an extension from snap-on and that's it. All right. So there you go. It's a very specific thing I use for that and that's for the nuts for the conveyors or like the uh, bottom conveyors for the tensioners and stuff like that. It's always a three-quarter. So there you go. Uh, this mini extension here with this mini ratchet you're going to have a, this has got an 8 mil on there, and here's the extension for it. And uh, just on Saturday, or was it Sunday? Just on Sunday, I ran into an issue with some of the rollers. Some of the rollers on a conveyor line will have drive rollers, and what a drive roller is, it's a roller with a motor in it. All right, That motor spins, and it has a rubber band that attaches to the roller on a conveyor, which moves the product through the conveyor line. That drive motor was rubbing against on the corners where the bends are, was driving against the side rails and causing that motor to seize up and not letting the product get through. It kept stopping and all this. <clears throat> so there's these locks that actually pull the roller out towards so it doesn't hit that rail. And there's these locking setups. You can use a cotter pin. There's all kinds of different methods for this. 
but this system has developed a, a lock system for the roller and for the roller bolt it's an 8 mil. Like I said, some of the stuff is going to be metric, some of the stuff is going to be standard. So pick and choose your uh, your stuff here. This is pretty cool. I like to look. I like to have one of these all the time. This is just a little mirror. I like to use this to check under conveyors, to check different things. Uh, so I'll have to bend down and look, right? So a little mirror come in handy a lot. Uh, I don't want to have a big giant level, so this is just good enough for uh, the conveyors, laying them on top, making making sure stuff's nice and level. Uh, pretty important, you know. If you're not level, then you know you're gonna have problems. So keep a level on you. Another specific, this is a three quarter. You can see the trend with the three quarter, right? A lot of three quarter stuff. Tensioners, rollers, different stuff like that. The reason why I have an open end is because sometimes you're just not gonna be able to put this over things. So you need an open end to hold a three quarter a lot of times. So always keep a redundancy of what you think you're gonna use the most. And I know three quarter is very popular. So there you go. Uh, over here, we have some more cool stuff. This is the bigger Cobra pliers by Nipex, and these are the big uh, adjustable wrench bears. Instead of having that old school adjustable wrench with the thing that always loosens up, this bad boy is not going to loosen up. You can get a big old nut with this. The reason why I use this the most is to jack up the conveyor tables. Maybe uh, I need them to rise up and be lower. Uh, and it's a big old bolt down there, so uh, these work come in handy for that. And they will not move. Like some of your channel locks or the adjustables that will turn will will come loose, right? This bad boy is not going to come loose. It's a great tool. And obviously your Cobra pliers. Now, I have a, a monorail mention. I'm not going to keep these in here, these, these next ones. So these next things here aren't going to be in this bag, these two. But honorable mention, it'd be, you, if you're going to get Nipex stuff, you know, the mini Cobra plier or the smaller versions, I think these are the 12 inch, these are like the 16 maybe, or yeah, I think so, I'm not sure. But the pipe wrench here is the best pipe wrench you'll ever own. This works good for the drive shafts. Drive shafts for stuff that turn conveyors, this thing is awesome for that. It locks up, it, it's like a, it's like a um, vice grip, but comes loose and you can turn things and it's just awesome. Same thing with this. Uh, it's a good tool, opens up real nice and wide, and you can do a lot with these too. So keep those in there. Um, a punch, this is a homemade punch that I made myself. Uh, it's good to have one of these around at all times, just a, a way to punch holes and stuff, or punch bolts through things, or whatever you need. So a punch. Um, two screwdrivers, flathead, one, they're both. I don't unscrew things with these. These are for one specific thing. Prying up on stuff to hold things up or whatever. That's what these are for. Uh, I have a smaller one. The bigger one that I use on both is equal. Um, hammer and things. You can use them. These are good ones, but not that great. Uh, Cobra, the, or Cobalt, and this one's from Husky. They're both marked with my name. Uh, as you see, a lot of this stuff's going to be marked with my name, but a good pair of flathead. And these are just uh, a simple, you know, no-brainer having in your toolkit. All right, so instead of having a big giant hammer, uh, that's a more specific job type of thing. I just keep this little mini uh, ball peen, and everyone loves this little mini hammer. This thing has come in handy. It's, it's all that you need a lot of times, just an, enough, but not too much, not too heavy. This is the E-Swing. Uh, believe me, I would love to have an oak handle hammer and stuff, but around heavy machinery, around... Uh, liquid uh, beverage bottles, bottling plants, you can't have any wood. So uh, this is why I keep a steel hammer. And uh, this has been a great hammer. It's not too big, not too bulky, fits in this bag nice. And if I need a bigger hammer, then I'm going down to my cart or my walkie in my bigger tool bag and I'm bringing up a four pound sledge or something you know, like that, a bigger hammer. So nice little hammer here. And uh, this thing is just, I love this thing. Everybody loves this little hammer. And some guys will grab this and go, give me a real hammer. And I'm like, you really want the big hammer? I, I can promise you, you don't need the big hammer for what you're doing. So anyway, uh, over here, we got some Sharpie markers. Super important to be able to mark things. Uh, you know, Sharpie markers. You know, and What do I need to tell you about that? Now, we're going to get into electrical stuff separately. So we're going to just keep going here to the six and one. So instead of carrying uh, five screwdrivers and, you know, five different freaking uh, flatheads, 
keep a good six in one. This is a cheapie, but it works really well. It's got my name marked in it. I've had this thing forever, and it has yet to break me. This is a six in one. Well, I call it a six in one. It's got one, two, three, four, five, six tools, okay, in one. All right, so this is a great tool. I love this thing. Got your flathead drivers, your, your Phillips. It's got everything you need, and there's that. This is a Nicholson file. This is a, a fine. Uh, sometimes you just need to file things, and this is just a, a, a small one I keep. Um, honestly, guys, the Nicholsons are the only ones to get. Don't get anything else but a Nicholson file. These are the very best. This one is also a chisel. So uh, I believe, is this the one I ground down myself? I forget. But I have a bigger set of these as well with the wooden handles, but theirs are in my cart. But this is the one I just keep in my bag. Sometimes that's all you need is just that a little bit of a file. Move this out of the way for now. So now let's get into, did we talk about this one? So this is just another flathead I used to, just sometimes you need to pick stuff apart. And that's all I use those for. Um, so yeah, now we can talk about electrical. So for electrical, when you're doing PLC cabinets, we're dealing with free drives. When you're doing wiring and all that kind of stuff like that, that's uh, 480 and stuff that can literally blow you apart if you're not careful. Always make sure you, that you have a ways to test to see if there's hot wires and always make sure you're using specific tools for electric. These are all electrical tools. All right, right here, this is new. I just got this. This is a fluke and this is just a voltage meter. It'll, you know, let you know if stuff's hot. You touch the wire with it, it'll beep. And uh, this is really co cool. You can also use this maybe uh, sometimes a boiler will flood or stuff like that and there'll be a, a water level and there's a lot of electrical, you gotta put that in the water and make sure you're not standing in, in water that'll electrocute you. Uh, even though the boots that I wear, uh, the Therogood, they are up to a thousand volts, I believe. But, you know guys, people will be, oh, I check the electrical. Uh, I just don't trust anybody's word but mine, so I always keep a way to test wires. This thing is awesome. It's small. I don't want to carry my big bolt meter. My, I call this my zap sack. We're going to get into this in a second. But always, always, always keep a way to check electrical. Now, the Klein is good. This is a fluke. This is the only ones I trust is fluke. They're the very best. They've been doing it for a real long time. This is a really, really good little uh, bolt meter tester. So keep that in there. So this is an awesome tool. This is a Weeha. This thing's expensive, man. I think this thing was like 60, 70 bucks or something. But this is an electrical tool and it has this little opening here and you open it up and it has all your different driver bits in it, right? So I usually, what happened here? There we go. I usually just keep this Phillips here, the standard Phillips on there. Um, but what you'll see here are these two here. and. They'll do the same thing, right? But this one sometimes just doesn't get into some of the frig drives. It's too thick. So I always keep these two smaller ones that will be a little easier to turn frequency drives or turn wire uh, nuts out and stuff like that. So there's there's these two and then the Weeha. This thing's awesome. Uh, here is the Nipex cable cutters, wire cutters, uh, crimping tool. It's, it's got pliers on it. These are a thousand volts. These things are awesome. Um, so this, this this cutter here, this wire cutter is ridiculously sharp. It'll cut your finger straight off. Uh, this thing will cut pennies in half. It's awesome. And then here, I just have a pair of electrical pliers, uh, pull and fuses, uh, grabbing wires that are hot or whatever. You know, this thing is, you know, this is the bee's knees right here for, you know, grabbing an electrical cabinets where where you need to uh, grab stuff that you want to be sure that you're not going to blow your hand off, all right? So you should be testing your wires anyway, but this is a good way to pull fuses, you know? So mainly that's what I use that for. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this uh, bag here. Only on the other side here, I keep electrical tape and uh, graph tape or Gorilla, you know, real nice tape. These things here you're going to want to have too. You don't have to have these, but these are real good. These are the flat channel locks. And sometimes you need to get in stuff that's you can't get regular wrenches in and because it's too thick or too thin of an area to get into. So these channel lock uh, wrench here, adjustable wrench, is just perfect for 
A lot of times I'll use this for the wrapper rollers. The rollers to get in, you need to get to hold a bolt and then to tighten the top. It won't fit, so these will fit in there. That's pretty much it, guys, for this bag. Uh, it's uh, real simple, but it's got everything you need pretty much to start off. Now, let's get into the zap sack. The zap sack here is going to have your real bolt meter in there, okay? And so this is your real deal bolt meter reader right here. This is a T5 1000. And this thing, you, this is how you're going to check your 480, your 240. Uh, your, your bigger motors, your PLC cabinets, your, your freak drives, your wiring, all that stuff. Test it. Make sure you, you, know, you, have, you don't have power. Don't put your hand there. Make sure you shut power off. Pull fuses, whatever. All, all that stuff. And this is the bee's knees right here to do it. Other things I keep in my zap sack. I have some safety glasses. I keep a pair of rubber gloves so you're not using bare skin. Always better. And then I keep a couple more of these like screwdrivers in here from Weha electrical screwdrivers just in case I'm not around my bag and I just brought this to test electrical I always have backup drivers uh, so I'm not using like oh somebody hands me hey you got a screwdriver and somebody hands me this and I'm standing by a 480 motor you know it's like no I'm not going to use that so alright that's why we use these kind of things and then here I got the uh, Nipex uh, wire crimpers pretty good I like these a lot I haven't used them a ton um, they got the blue and the red handle a little bit softer grip and then we got some more electrical tape in here, uh, zip ties, uh, wire nuts with silicone inside, um, wire cutters, and then I just got a bunch of fuses in here, like 35 amp fuses for the PLC cabinets and stuff like that. So that is your zap sack. So a good mechanical engineer or a maintenance mechanic will have a good grease gun. And the only grease gun you're to get and to waste your money on is a Lincoln. This is your this is a Lincoln grease gun. You'll be able to tell by the awesome design here in the handle. This has the lube lock on there, so it'll lock on. This grease gun is for the Fanuc robot only. That robot gets very specific grease. You can't just be putting any old grease in a $150,000 robot. So um, that is why I have this. And you can see it says danger. Don't freaking touch my grease gun. I do have other grease guns for bearings and stuff like that. Uh, I have the knockoffs, but the Lincoln is the best. It's the very best of the best. So if you're going to get a grease gun, make sure it's a Lincoln. And that is pretty much it. Now the lock, the lure lock or the lock and lube thing here, it's great, but sometimes you can't get into certain bearings with this. So I do have a like a lot of times if I switch the grease out of here. Uh, which I never do. It only gets the robot grease, but if I do have to, I'll switch this whole line out and I'll put a different end on here that will get into certain areas. But this is specifically for the robot and I know this fits into the robot grease ports, which only get done every year anyway. So, um, but anyway, the Lincoln grease gun, that's the grease gun you're going to get if you're going to be a good mechanic. Oh man. So that's it guys for this video. Not to say that all this stuff is going to make you a good mechanic. If you have this, you're going to be like the greatest mechanic ever. But the, the point of this is to tell you that have the stuff you need on hand, like right there. You don't want to be looking around for, for stuff. Get to know the machines. Get to know the bolts. You know, Even if you have to spend on your downtime, like a, you, know, you get some downtime, just walk around a machine and try different things and, and, and attach your, your sockets to different and write it down and be like, oh... Now I know all these bolts are three quarter, and now I know these are all 10 mils or whatever. So, you know, if that's what you gotta do, then do that, because it'll make you a better mechanic later, and people will notice that. They're gonna know, like, that guy always has the right thing. He doesn't come to the job when they call a mechanic. He just doesn't walk there to troubleshoot and not have the tools to fix it if there's a problem. Because the last thing you wanna do, and I see this a lot with new guys, is they'll come to a job, they'll call a mechanic, they'll come to the job, and they won't come with any tools, and they'll actually find a problem, and then they'll be like, oh, I have to go get my tools now. And it's you don't want to be that guy, so that's why I have this bag that's going to be able to do whatever I need to do on the machine at this point in time. So, anyways, hope you guys enjoy the video. Like, share, subscribe, comment at the bottom. I love you all. Have a great rest of your week. And summer, I love you all. Peace. So fucking hot in here. Whew. Yo. My shirt is, it's fucking drenched. Ugh. I'm drenched. It's hot. It's too hot. I need to get air conditioner up here, like ASAP. Oh, give me that cold air.
You guys don't understand that, like the the pain I just went through to do that video. Like holy shit, it is so fucking hot up here.